Welcome back. It's day 30 of 365 of studying and reading the Bible together. And today we're reading from Leviticus chapter 1 through 3. But you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button so that the word of God can spread to more people. Now, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father God, we come to you humbly. Thank you for another day. Thank you for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we ask that only your will be done, not ours, but yours. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, on today, we repent for our sins, the sins that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. Lord, we are so thankful that you are our Redeemer, that you are the Lamb of God, and that your blood covers us and atones for our sins. And Lord, on today, we just ask that you rebuke and you send away all iniquities and principalities sent by the evil one. God, we ask for a heart like yours to love what you love and to hate what you hate. This and many more blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. In chapter 1, the Lord gives Moses instructions for the burnt offering. The burnt offering symbolizes devotion, surrender, and atonement. Preferred Book of Moses, called Leviticus. Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the livestock, of the herd, and of the flock. If his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He shall kill the bull before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into its pieces. The sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood in order on the fire. Then the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. But he shall wash its entrails and its legs with water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. If his offering is of the flocks, of the sheep, or of the goats, as a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring a male without blemish. He shall kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall sprinkle its blood all around on the altar. And he shall cut it into its pieces with its head and its fat. And the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. But he shall wash the entrails and the legs with water. Then the priest shall bring it all and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And if the burnt sacrifice of his offering to the Lord is of birds, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or young pigeons. The priest shall bring it to the altar, wring off its head, and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out at the side of the altar and he shall remove its crop with its feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east side into the place for ashes. Then he shall split it at its wings, but shall not divide it completely, and the priest shall burn it on the altar on the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. In chapter 2, the Lord gives Moses instructions for the grain offering. The grain offering symbolizes thanksgiving and dedication to God. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, one of whom shall take from it his handful of fine flour and oil with all the frankincense and the priest shall burn it as a memorial on the altar, an offering made by fire, 
a sweet aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. And if you bring as an offering a grain offering baked in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. But if your offering is a grain offering baked in a pan, it shall be of fine flour, unleavened, mixed with oil. You shall break it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is a grain offering baked in a covered pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. You shall bring the grain offering that is made of these things to the Lord. And when it is presented to the priest, he shall bring it to the altar. Then the priest shall take from the grain offering a memorial portion and burn it on the altar. It is an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And what is left of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. No grain offering which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering to the Lord made by fire. As for the offering of the first fruits, you shall offer them to the Lord, but they shall not be burned on the altar for a sweet aroma. And every offering of your grain offering you shall season with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. If you offer a grain offering of your first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer for the grain offering of your first fruits green heads of grain roasted on the fire, grain beaten from full heads. And you shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it. It is a grain offering. Then the priest shall burn the memorial portion, part of its beaten grain and part of its oil with all the frankincense, as an offering made by fire to the Lord. In chapter 3, the Lord explains the peace offering. The peace offering is a sacrifice that expresses gratitude, fellowship, or as a vow to God. When his offering is a sacrifice of a peace offering, if he offers it of the herd, whether male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle the blood all around on the altar. Then he shall offer from the sacrifice of the peace offering an offering made by fire to the Lord. The fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys, he shall remove. And Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is on the wood that is on the fire, as an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. If his offering as a sacrifice of a peace offering to the Lord is of the flock, whether male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offers a lamb as his offering, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and kill it before the tabernacle of meeting. And Aaron's sons shall sprinkle its blood all around on the altar. Then he shall offer from the sacrifice of the peace offering as an offering made by fire to the Lord, its fat and the whole fat tail which he shall remove close to the backbone and the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is on the entrails, the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys, he shall remove. And the priest shall burn them on the altar as food, an offering made by fire to the Lord. And if his offering is a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. He shall lay his hand on its head, and kill it before the tabernacle of meeting. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle its blood all around on the altar. Then he shall offer from it his offering 
as an offering made by fire to the Lord. The fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the flanks and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys, he shall remove. And the priest shall burn them on the altar as food, an offering made by fire for a sweet aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. This shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your dwellings. You shall eat neither fat nor blood. You already know what time it is. I got my notes here and today I'm doing a reading summary. We see throughout these chapters the importance of sacrifices with no blemishes. But why is that? Yes, it symbolizes purity, holiness, and even reverence for our God. But more importantly, it foreshadows our Savior. Jesus is also known as the Lamb of God, the sacrifice that God made to atone for all of our sins. And Jesus had no blemishes because he lived a sinless life. His blood washes over us, which reminds me of Romans chapter 8, 3 and 4. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On the account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But that's all for day 30, and I appreciate you being a part of this. And if this was a blessing to you, go ahead and share this with three other people who need to hear this too. And I'll see you on day 31. Peace.